Well, seems the time has come. I'm reviewing the Torrid Incarnon. So we'll first cover the evolutions, the mod configs I have chosen. We'll test them in the Simulacrum, and then we'll go to a Seal Path mission and test how it works in an actual uh, environment. So let's cover those evolutions, shall we? All right, so with Evolution 1, we get the ability to fire a long-range beam. Dan just has a little bit of knowledge that Punch Through does not affect how this beam works. And stuff like Sinister Reach and Combustion Beam obviously don't work with this weapon because the Torrid is not a beam weapon. And it's similar to other uh, beam-type weapons when it's in its incarnate form, so it, the damage will change it. Evolution 2 gives us the choices of Final Fusillade and Plentiful Mayhem. Final Fusillade will increase your damage by 51 and give you plus 3 mold shot on the last shot in your magazine. And Plentiful Mayhem will increase your damage by 31 and mold shot consumes ammo directly from the capacity, but it does an additional 60% damage. This right here affects both modes and it pulls directly from the magazine, but when it's in the Incarnate form, instead of increasing the damage of the additional projectiles created by the mold shot, all mold shot bonuses are increased by 60%, so overall Plentiful Mayhem is the better option in Evolution 2, but... If you want, you can choose Final Fusillade, but it is obviously not the best option. Next up is Evolution 3. With Evolution 3, we are given Swift Deliverance, Renewed Horror, and Extended Volley. Swift Deliverance will increase your projectile speed by 50%. Renewed Horror will, uh, on Reload from Entry, Lingering Damage Total Duration doubles on the first shot. And Extended Volley will increase the base magazine capacity by plus 9. To me, the best option here is Perk 1, purely because the projectile speed will go faster, so it makes the base weapon feel a lot better. But if you like, you can go with Perk 3 or Perk 2. I think Perk 3 is better than Perk 2, but dealer's choice. Finally, with Evolution 4, we are given three options. Commodore's Fortune, Survivor's Edge, and Elemental Balance. Commodore's Fortune will increase your base uh, crit chance by 20%. Survivor's Edge will increase both crit chance and stash chance by 15%, and the elemental balance will increase your stash chance by 34%. Overall, this is a dealer's choice based off how you play with your weapon. For me, I play with a mixture of status and crit, so I go with Survivor's Edge, but if you want to go for more crit, go Commodores. If you want to go more status, go for elemental balance. A little thing that is bugged about the weapon is that Galvanize Aptitude ignores the base damage value of both Evolution 2 perks, so no matter what, this doesn't really affect it but it's still a very good mod to run. So let's cover those builds we've made, test them. So we have three builds. We have one for armored enemies, corpus enemies, and then a fun little build at the end. So let's cover the common occurrence with every build. Every single build, as you'll see at the top, you will see Galvanized Chamber, Galvanized Aptitude, and Galvanized Scope. I feel Galvanized Chamber and that Galvanized Aptitude are very, well, common sense mods to have, but Galvanized Scope, why is this? I use it due to the fact of when you are in the Torrid Incarnon, it is a beam weapon. It's easy to hit a headshot because it's easy to aim at the head. So go for the headshot to get more crit chance overall because it is better than using critical delay. So I oh, hope that makes sense. Battle sense to increase the crit damage. We have corrosive. We have heat to deal with armored enemies and rifle elementalist because you were dealing uh, heat damage. Toxin before you obviously swap over to using uh, whenever you're in the uh, card on. Next up is corpus. Corpus, same threes top, battle sense. Except in this case, we're using magnetic toxin. Once again, rifle elementalist. You can replace rifle elementalist with a primed mod if you wish. So deal choice finally with the armor and blast slash build i have at the end this is purely for fun it's a lot of fun to use because as you chain in the uh incarnon it just you just hear that pop 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 of all the enemies dying so let's test out the uh two good builds and then finally we'll test the fun build and we'll go to a still path mission so with the first build being armored let's go ahead and go against the uh enemy type that's still weak to uh corrosive and heat so as you see it kills basic enemies quite fast we proc the incarnon and we aim for the head to get galvanized scope to start proccing and well there they all go they just they just perish i see no 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 struggle at all so let's cover the corpus build next let's see how that handles the corpus so i did notice a little late that critical delay was still in the corpus build but i went in and replaced it with infected clip so that way we have more tox damage but pick what you see fit so we get our incarnon procced hit the incarnon and aim for the head and well there they went. I also love the new magnetic effects. So that was the Corpus build. I'll reshow it just so you can see what I had changed. So we put Infected Clip instead of Critical Delay. But pick whatever you like. Next up, Armor and Blast. Now you're probably wondering why did I swap to Mag? Well, the reason I swapped to Mag is so I can show off why this is a fun build. Magnetize all the enemies once you get your Incarn on and just... Well, there they went. You just left click. The whole blast change makes it where they keep exploding, so they can't really do much once they're crowded and just keep procking off of each other. So, 
I'll go ahead and find a mission to go into and figure out what build we should use. And I'll see y'all in the Steel Path mission. I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I do hope you guys do enjoy these videos, and I hope you are enjoying it now. So if you want to show that you do enjoy, make sure you guys hit that like button. Do subscribe and turn on the bell for post notifications. That way you can always get notified whenever I post another video, so that you always get, well, more content. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. Enjoy the rest of the video. And let's go. So I believe, if I'm 100% correct, I brought the Blast build purely because I wanted to have the fun and the power, for, so I brought Saren for the obvious power because she is a really, really strong Warframe. But as you see, it is, it's doing its job. Everything just goes kaboom. There was also a Neo Fissure, so I'm taking advantage of that as well. Hoping I can get a Galantine Prime blueprint so I could do a video on that thing. Because I have a, I have the Gram. I should do a Gram video because I love the, I love my Gram Prime. I really do. I just wish it was a tad bit stronger because it does feel kind of weak. Like giving an incarnate on that makes it a little stronger. I'm not biased, at all. Trust. But as you see, everything kind of just explodes. I haven't struggled yet. I don't think I will either. Uh, ooh, I hear a pack of them growing. Hold on. Hello there. That's why I love the new blast feature. Oh, and they up my ability range. Oh, y'all have made a mistake. One moment. Let's let's uh let's have a little bit of fun. And Toxiblade, do your thing. <laughs> Death. All right. I will see y'all when the acolyte spawns because these are just small fry. Like hell. My uh my little hound that I made a video on. He he can solo steel path. So I'll see y'all when an acolyte spawns. I mean, like, look at the blast. That's just the blast doing it. I procked it out there and left them alone. And now it's the Corosa. But all that white was the blast damage that I just spent stacking on them. Like, holy. I mean, look at that room. It's gone. God, while the Torn may be, like, the meta for almost everything, it's just a lot of fun to use if you're just not trying to be meta this and meta that. All right, like I said. I mean, look at that. It's just death from afar. So, all right, he's here. Let's see how... Let's see who we get specifically. Oh, that's an easy one to deal with too. Good. Did they spawn? There you are. Well, let's see how this does. Because this is a funny build. It's not really meant for individuals. Eh, individual target still did quite well. Can't find their head. Oh, come on. This is the annoying part whenever they do that. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I completely uh, completely forgot this was a Neo Fissure. Let's see what I get. Ah, damn. As we saw, it did quite well against the uh, Acolyte, so I'll see y'all back in the Orbiter whenever... Hell, I've been in here long enough for an entire another uh, Acolyte to respawn, so let's see how we handle this one, shall we? Where'd you spawn? Oh, there you are. I mean... <laughs> that, would, that was not a struggle. So, what do I think about the Torrid and the Torrid Incarnon? Overall, I think it is a very strong weapon and a very strong Incarnon. I now understand why it was placed as one of the highest and most used Incarnons that they have made, as it is a very powerful weapon. Overall, the builds are fun. It does not have to be a meta-based build, so play how you see fit. This was a pure fun build to have because it was relying on Blast and just letting it proc around the entire map. Armored one obviously focuses on armor, and the Corpus one focuses around killing a ton of Corpus. Change these mods to how you see fit, and these builds sometimes use a primer. So take into account for that using things like a Hound that can apply a ton of status. You could use things like Dyriga, who can apply it with Arc Coil, or one of these, or uh, Nautilus with or a Nautilus Prime, whichever one you have. So uh, have a great rest of your day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, do make sure you hit that like button, do subscribe, and turn on the bell for post notifications. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.